Today I'm going to do a kit breakdown of my plate carrier. Purpose of the video, show you the overall setup, show you the different products that are in this, show you some of our solutions that are on it, and hopefully give you some ideas that'll be helpful for your plate carrier setup. As always, your kit should work for you and what you need it to do. What I do for work is probably different than what you do for work or as a civilian. So adapt your plate carrier to fit your needs. But regardless, hopefully this gives you some good ideas. We're gonna link all of the different products that are in this down in the description. Obviously some of these are Forge Concepts solutions, but a lot of them from other companies, they're not paying us to talk about any of this stuff. It's just stuff that I happen to like and have tested and have used. And some of it I don't like, and I'll point that out and mention as well. But you'll have links to everything in case I mess up a name or don't mention something's exact product name if you're interested in any of this stuff. So start with the base of this plate carrier. It is a Spiritus Systems LV119. I've used different plate carriers. I also have a Cry ABS. I uh, used Pharaohs, used a Cry JPC. Uh, there are a lot of great plate carriers out there and I think they all have pros and cons. I think that the LV119 is really well built. It's also simple and it fits what I need and has treated me well. But if there's other plate carriers that you like, I think the principles are really the same. Uh, and this is just one of the great options that are out there. So we're gonna go full 360 degrees of this plate carrier, um, talking through everything in detail. We'll have timestamp sections down below if you wanna skip to a specific part but this is gonna be pretty comprehensive. First thing we're gonna cover is the front. And here right now you can see I've got six magazines set up. There's some debate out there right now on how many mags you should carry in your plate carrier. And I think that the most common setup that you'll see is guys carrying three magazines on the front and that's it. Which begs the question, where are your other mags? Your basic uh, fighting load, seven magazines, you got three here, one in your gun, where the other three. Uh, some guys will keep one or two on their belt. Some will keep some in an assault pack. Some will just have less. Uh, that's really, again, specific to what you do. I like to have the ability to carry mags, but my typical setup looks like this, where I'll keep three magazines here, one in the gun, one in my belt for five, and then the other two I'll usually keep in my back panel uh, or in an assault pack. But if this scenario dictates, I can easily plus up this system, which is important to me. So I can put three more here, so that's six. I can put two here in this side pouch, which we'll get to. And I can put one right here in the Spirit of Gista. So I can easily carry eight or nine just on the plate carrier, plus one on the belt, plus one on the weapon. So have the ability to carry what you need and have it be able to scale up or down to what your needs are, to what your unit SOPs are. Um, I think a lot of the discussion of why guys don't run two sets of mags is they say that if they're in the prone, it lifts them up way too high. At the same time, you'll see all sorts of junk or admin stuff, maybe not junk, but you'll see all sorts of stuff up front of people's kit that's just as thick as, as a P mag, which is, you know, what, three quarters of an inch thick? An inch thick. So don't just parrot what other people say, actually test stuff and see. Actually get in the prone in your plate carrier and see, uh, okay, well, is this actually propping up too high? If it is, make some adjustments. If it's not, maybe reconsider things. Okay, so these mags are carried in a Spiritus Mark V. I have tried a bunch of different placards, been a fan of this one for a few reasons. One, it's got these holes drilled in. For what I do, it's critical that I can add bungee retention to everything. So here's one of our high grip bungee retainers um, over on this Gista. If I'm doing airborne or maritime stuff, which is something that I do, I'll add these retainers to my mags, and it's super easy. They just run through these holes. Additionally, the Mark V takes different types of inserts. I've got the Spiritus Elastic inserts in here right now, which work great, but you can put Kydex inserts or whatever else you like. There's also a bunch of aftermarket ones out there. The sides also have the holes in them and Molly slots. I mean, I've used those four is to attach tourniquets. So, Talking tourniquets real quick, on this side I've got one attached to one of our headlamp retainers. 
which just runs down through the molly and then out the sides. I like using a headlamp retainer because it uses shock cord. And shock cord, I've never had shock cord break on me before. It's just durable. On the other side, I've got some EPDM bands, rubber bands, attached to this tourniquet just to show you another option you can do that's crazy low cost. Um, if you're gonna use rubber bands, use EPDM bands because they stand up to sunlight and heat and moisture. Every time I see tourniquets or anything secured to someone's kit with just regular rubber bands, like the tan kind, I kind of cringe. You're asking for those to break on you at the worst time. So there's also a great pouches out there. I think Shaw Concepts makes one that attaches to the side of placards like this. Um, I personally like to keep my tourniquets on the outside where I can grab them with one hand and just rip it away. It doesn't require any dexterity to access these tourniquets, which is why I'm set up this way. I also keep a tourniquet on my belt and I keep them on my clothing as well. Um, you should have multiple tourniquets accessible with both arms. And that's how I run mine. The bottom dangler option that some guys use, also a good option. But again, this is what I've tested and I've found to work well for me. On the front of the Mark V, I've got a Blue Force Gear 10 speed pouch. Now this probably looks a little bit different from what you've seen before. That is because I've sewn on these tabs. And I've done that for two reasons. One, I run bungee retention uh, through here using our high grip bungee retainers. So I can add positive retention to anything that's in these pouches. Second reason is that for re-indexing whatever, whether it's a magazine, a banger, or anything else that you jam into here, it makes it easy to pull forward and insert whatever you need. I think Blue Force Gear 10 speeds speak for themselves. They've been around forever. Guys love them. I love them. I, it's the number of things you can put in here is crazy. I'll jam just in a typical outing. I'll jam anything from more mags to a banger to electrical tape to loom tape, uh, sharpies, multi tool, chem lights. There's just so many uses for this uh, this pouch that I, I just haven't found anything that works better for me. Uh, and I love having the elastic that just fits a bunch of different needs. So moving up the front of the plate bag, we've got a Persec gear phone board. So this phone board attaches to the Molly on the front of the LV119 and it uses Velcro or hook loop on the inside that then attaches to the phone case and then you can close it shut. So this is for running EUDs, which is a fancy acronym for an user device or a cell phone. And the reason that I like using this is that it works across all different types of phones. So you just attach the Velcro to the phone or the phone case and it works in here. If you only use the exact same phone or the same size or type of phone, um, like a Samsung S20 for example, then there are cases made by Cogworks and Juggernaut that work with their mounts, but those are specific to a single type of phone. For what I do, I occasionally need to switch phone types and this enables me to use different phone types with the same phone board. Um, use this for a few months now, been a big fan. It's held up great. Never had a phone fall out of here. Um, honestly, a big, big fan of this case. Underneath the case, it might be a little hard to see as I try to move this in. I've got this uh, Axle Advanced sandwich bag. So this is basically an admin pouch that sits between the plate carrier and the placard. And I'll keep in here different things. I'll keep map markers. I will keep GRGs. I'll keep Sharpies, pencils, pens. Um, you can fit a, uh, write in a rain notebook in here. You can fit a protractor in here. Something I always keep, and I think I've shared this before, is basically these loom tape cards that I make. So I just take some loom tape and you can make it into whatever size you need. And I laminate it and tape it over to give it a little bit of thickness. And I'll use this to pre-charge it before you go out at night, but it's a great tool for writing in the dark. Uh, you can write reports on here, really whatever, uh, but I have found that to be an invaluable tool and one of the best ways to take notes in the dark. One little note, I always stow my zippers all the way to the right, on backpacks, on pouches, whatever. 
This enables me in the dark to know where my zipper poles are going to be and to quickly access them. I recommend that you do something like that as well with your zippers. Okay, moving over here, got my push to talk. This is an issued uh, Invisio V60, I believe. Basically, a push to talk that enables you to work with multiple radios through one push to talk. So, uh, in this setup, I'm running dual radios. Um, you can actually then plug another cable into vehicle comms um, or helicopter comms. But great push to talk. It uses a metal clip on the back, which then attaches down through this uh, loop here that's on the Spiritus uh, front bag. Problem is it just kind of runs all over the place. So again, I'm using one of our headlamp retainers or Molly retainers, whatever you want to call them, to securely attach it so that it's in the same place and I can then index the buttons and use it as I need to. Um, I've probably got three or four of our headlamp retainers used throughout this plate carrier. None of them are actually holding the, the headlamp, but it's just a great tool for having shock cord, which I trust to not break, uh, hold different things. Speaking of headlamps, got one here. This is a Princeton Tech, I believe, and I spray painted it um, and made this uh, retaining band for it. I don't really like having headlamps around my neck. I don't really like having anything around my neck, to be honest with you, so I keep it around my plate carrier. If I don't have an EUD on my plate carrier, I'll use a headlamp retainer and secure this to the chest when I'm not using it. But in this configuration, it sort of just sits up here. Headlamp is great to have as sort of a backup. Um, I've got helmet light, but it's nice to be able to just pull this down and do whatever you need to do and have that sort of elastic to work with you. I think you should always have light sources with you. I keep this one on my plate carrier and then the fanny pack that I wear pretty much all the time has another backup one in it. I did use a side release buckle on this strap that I made. So I wanted like a lot of elastic so I could use this to kind of move wherever. But then it also detaches so I can take it off. I could put it around my head, I could put it around my neck, um, but handy to be able to take your, uh, your headlamp right off your plate carrier. Okay, moving along now, so that covers the front of the bag. We're gonna go to the left side. So the cummerbund on this is an Axle Advanced uh, Equinox cummerbund. So the, this cummerbund is a structural cummerbund. And if you look here, I'm basically squeezing down on it and you can't really compress these vertically. So they bend well in this dimension and you can sort of bend them this way, but if you put vertical load on it, they won't compress. I've used various types of cummerbunds. So I've used elastic, I've used the two strand and three strand, both like the cry and spiritus ones that are out there that are semi-structural but I like a structural rigid cummerbund. The axle one uses Tegris on the inside, so a thermoplastic underneath this laminate material. And the reason I like it is that for load carriage ability on a cummerbund, it basically maintains its structure. And when you have a bunch of load, it doesn't peel off or sort of rotate down and compress down the way that a softer cummerbund would. So on the front side of it, I've got a Spiritus Gista pouch attached. Now the Gista pouch is a great pouch because on the back of it, you have the ability to add magazine or whatever else you want. Um, so here I can add again, a magazine and I'm using a VXV Concepts insert that has the ability to add bungee retention. Their insert also has space for a pistol mag uh, here, again, I've got a bungee retainer on it, and I'll put all sorts of stuff in, in there. Um, right now, I've got just a cloth, a little microfiber cloth for cleaning iPro and, um, and optics. But you can put whatever else you want in here. And if you don't have anything in this side piece, it basically kind of collapses down nicely. And the rest of this pouch, a few things. So first of all, I've got a chem bundle. So this is using our chem keepers. It's got a keychain cable and then one of these EPDM bands. Chem lights don't do well with UV exposure once they're out of the package. So they'll degrade in quality. So what I like to do is prep a bundle of chem lights, stick them in this pouch, close it. And then when I'm ready, whether it's at VDO 
getting off a bird, I mean, that sort of thing. But beforehand, I'll go ahead and take out these bundles, attach them to the utility hook on my battle belt, and I have them ready to go, pull off, and deploy. So that's how I use these. Right now, this is just a Velcro closure. I'm planning on probably trying out one of those Tracer Tactical, I think they're called Viper closures to make this silent. Um, if you didn't watch our silencing your kit video, I recommend checking that out for some notes on there. But I don't keep anything in this pouch that I would need to access quietly because that makes noise. So I also keep a pair of flex cuffs in here, pre-staged as your flex cuff should be. Keep a Sunto wrist compass and a Garmin Fortrex. I'm always wearing these when I'm wearing this plate carrier, but that's where I keep them so I don't lose them. I also keep some backup batteries, so some double A's and triple A's. Always keep those in my fanny pack as well. I keep a lighter and some electrical tape. I keep it with a keychain cable just to be able to pull it out easily, and then I can also hang this off different things. Um, commonly though, I'll just take this if I'm, if I'm having to use it and I'll just jam it right in the front of this placard. And this is an example of why this uh, Blue Force Gear placard is just so useful. And again, with a keychain cable, pull it right out. So then, the last thing I keep in here is some CLP. Now just a, a little tip or trick for you, this CLP bottle is actually just an eyedropper bottle. And you can buy like 10 or 20 packs of these for I think like less than a dollar a bottle. You basically fill them with CLP and then you screw this lid on and it's one of those sealed lids where the lid is attached to this smaller plastic collar. I've seen CLP bottle lids pop off um, or the spouts pop open and people get CLP all over their stuff so many times. I've never had one of these little bottles fail and I've been using them for years. So what I do is I prep a bunch of these and then you should be preparing and moving your weapon pre-mission. So this is sort of a backup. And I just keep it sealed up like this, knowing it's not gonna explode on me. If I crack it open, then that just becomes the one that I start using. And then I'll just reload with one that's sealed for the next time. So just a little trip, uh, little tip or trick for you. And uh, yeah, hopefully that saves you from having to clean CLP off your kit. All right, moving along here to the side, I've got an IR buzz saw. So this is just a chem light prepared with some gutted 550. Again, chem lights degrade in, in uh, UV light. So if you're gonna do something like this, make sure you swap them out every few weeks or certainly pre-mission uh, for real world scenarios for training. You know, every few weeks or a month is probably a good idea. But I like having an IR bus saw uh, easily accessible. Sometimes I'll jam it right down here in this little slot on the Gista. But I keep this headlamp retainer on the side. And again, just for molly retention. You can put a banger in here. You can um, put chem lights, put rags, you can put all sorts of things. I just, there's a lot of use case for having uh, basically an adjustable piece of shock cord attached to the side. And with a headlamp retainer, it just stays securely in place. Uh, before I move on from this side, I'm going to just talk about the radio pouch real quick here. So this is a Cry, it was an Airlight radio pouch, and it's a radio wing. So there's a piece of Velcro that attaches underneath the placard that then supports the radio pouch. And the problem I've found with radio wings, and I've tried a bunch of them, is that they sag. These radios, it's a, a Harris 152 uh, Alpha, it's, it, it's pretty heavy. So, and it tends, they tend to sag. So what I've done is I took some zip ties and I actually zip tied the top of the radio pouch through the Molly to the cummerbund. Don't be afraid to use zip ties to make your kit work for you. Now that does lock this side of the, of the kit together. So I can't actually detach this side of the cummerbund uh, from the plate carrier, but that's not a problem for me. And I'll explain why later when we talk about the right side of this plate carrier. But uh, this is the best radio wing I've found. Um, I'm curious to try out the Shaw Concepts one as well because it's padded, but this maintain it's super light and it maintains its form. So I can pull this radio out 
and really easily re-index it. Um, it's got nice thin shock cord for retention, which I like. Never had a radio fall out of here, but I can access the side buttons on it and I can put an adapter on this side if I need to run a KDU or an EUD off of the radio. Um, so big fan of this radio pouch. And then I got the, the cables managed down through here uh, and up running up and around into the push to talk. All right, moving along to this side here, the shoulder pad and talk cable management for a second. So first of all, cable management is a must. If you run a radio or have cables on your kit, you need to have them managed. A lot of guys will just leave their cables sort of dangling off, especially from a push to talk uh, over to their helmet. And you'll see them all the time. Even experienced dudes, you'll see their, their stuff get snagged in vehicles, trees, etc. So minimize snag hazards and actually manage your cables. And these are Spiritus tri, uh, trifold shoulder panels or shoulder pads rather. They're, um, they're not padded. I don't like padded shoulder pads. I like that I can wear a ruck or anything over this and it just doesn't create bulk. Uh, your traps will get adjusted, but that's just my preference. What I do have in here are a couple of our routing tabs. So these routing tabs basically are Velcro pieces that attach in and then you close up and they work with any, any tri-fold uh, sort of shoulder pad that's on the market. Spiritus, Ferro, Axle, etc. And then we have these one wrap loops so that you can manage cables. So normally this down lead is attached to my amps and all I'll do when my plate carrier is on, and I do this every time and it's super easy to do while the plate carrier is worn, I'll just go ahead and run the cable through here and then plug the cable in to my push to talk up front. So now I can use it. The reason I do this, this comes out a lot easier from the push to talk and is a more durable connector than the side that's on that actually goes into the ear pro. So I like to keep it that way so that this stays on the ear pro and this is ready for my kit. This other cable that's running around is a second uh, radio connector that runs into the push to talk that runs to my secondary radio that's on the back, which I'll talk about in a bit. <clears throat> Coming to the back of the plate carrier here, this cable management continues through another routing tab that's secured. These routing tabs are secure to any hook or loop surface. And I don't always run a second radio, so when I'm not running one, I take the cabling up because I don't like excess snag hazards, which is why I use this. If I kept the cable there permanently, I probably would just zip tie it to my kit. Before I forget, I do also use this routing tab uh, to manage a hose running into a camelback or hydration bladder, whatever you want to call it, that I keep in the back panel sometimes. So speaking of back panel, this is the Spiritus um, assault back panel and there's debate over back panels do you need them are they actually useful should you just use an assault pack and i think there's some merits to kind of both trains of thought main one being is that you can't actually access stuff in your back panel yourself it requires a teammate so that's what these are for these are for holding bangers or for your mic mic uh, that a teammate would access that's what these top ones are for and these are just gp pouches Sometimes I'll use one of those, uh, the Spiritus Night Vision sort of inserts to put it back here and keep my nods in here. If I'm um, not wearing an assault pack, you need to carry nods into the daytime. Always keep your nods on your person. Um, I have swapped out the zipper poles that come with them, the metal zipper poles with our zipper silencers. Again, check out the silencing your kit video for why I do this but all of these zipper poles are easy to index and use. They also don't make any noise. Um, back panels that use metal zipper poles, they tend to make like a tinking noise off of stuff. And yeah, that's, that's, that's a no-go for me. Noise discipline's huge. So zipper silencers have worked well. Main thing I actually use this for though is I'll actually unzip this main compartment here and I'll run a source hydration bladder. I like having water in a hydration bladder versus uh, with water bottles because 
I can take a drink without using both hands, uh, and I just have more carriage capacity in the back. It's hard to kind of carry water bottles. Um, again, that's just my preference. I know some guys don't like hydration bladders or have them explode. I've had great experiences with the source ones, and so that's what I use. But if I don't use anything in this back panel, then it collapses down flat. No problem. So it probably adds three quarters of an inch to an inch of bulk to the back of the plate bag. That's really no factor. I regularly wear an assault pack or other ruck over the back of this without issue um, with this back panel on. So I don't have any problem having it on there. It adds utility for me in scenarios where I don't need to carry another bag. And it, I can put stuff in here like VS 17 or batteries, um, additional backup cabling, additional magazines, um, other types of ammunition. There's a lot that you can put back in here that a teammate can easily access and doesn't really create problems for me. And frankly, carrying stuff in a back panel is just a lot more comfortable. It stays on your body. It actually counterbalances all the weight on the front of a plate carrier really nicely. And it just keeps, keeps it tighter and closer. So I think there's merit to a back panel, but again, what fits your need. On the back here, on the bottom, I've got a Ferro Concepts uh, Ford Observations Roll 1. So this is an IFAC. I keep additional med in my fanny uh, pack as well, but this is accessible with both hands, these pull tabs. It's comfortable on my lower back when I'm seated, like in a vehicle. Um, and it takes, basically just takes advantage of unused real estate on my plate carrier, which I, I really like that. Um, Bunch of guys that I work with use these uh, and have had success with them. So uh, a cool option, definitely something to check out. Coming around to the back uh, right of the plate carrier, I've got another radio. So here it's a, a trellis radio. Uh, it could be MPU-5, could be another 152, could be 163. It doesn't really matter. But um, if I'm running a second radio, I keep it back here. Reason being is I'm a righty and I like to keep my right shoulder free and clear so that I can shoulder a weapon without it running into an antenna or anything like that. So I've found running it all the way here in the back works best for me, keeps the cables out of the way. Obviously I cannot manipulate things on this radio while I'm wearing it easily. I can reach around and actually manipulate, but it's not easy. Um, so the radio that I tend to make more changes on, I keep in the front and then the one that's static for whatever I'm doing or requires minimal changes will be the radio that I keep uh, in the back. Again, cables are all managed um, so that this stuff doesn't get snagged on things. That's super important. Coming around to the front side on the right here, I've got one of these Spiritus spud pouches. So this is actually one of the newer additions uh, that I've made. And I've tried different pouches here and this has been the best one so far. So it has this flap thing, this pangolin flap, I call it. Basically a, a dynamic sort of cut open flap that allows you to secure all sorts of different stuff uh, in this pouch and secure it in a way where you can add a lot of tension to it, it's not gonna fall out. So that can be magazines, can be smokes, could be bangers, could be a radio actually fits in here nicely. Um, really whatever, you can jam a lot down into this pouch. But when I'm not using anything in here, I'll basically stow this in and then secure the pouch down with the, the uh, shock cord retainer that they have to keep it flat and out of the way. I know that a lot of people like to keep their strong side clear so they can draw their pistol, but I think a, 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 just a sort of a couple of thoughts on that. One, if you have a bunch of weight on your left side coming bund and nothing on the right side, you're gonna be really imbalanced. And over hours, days, weeks, months of wearing this stuff, it's gonna take a toll on your body. Two, I think there's just utility to having stuff accessible in this location, easily accessible on your kit. And three, with enough training, you can figure out how to clear your kit with a pistol draw. Again, with training, which is what it always comes down to, you can work around this. And I really don't even notice it anymore if there's anything on this side of me. So uh, last thing on sort of this plate carrier to cover is just using tubes. So the way that most placards and cummerbunds interface together is just a piece of Velcro that will go underneath the placard. 
Um, at this point, the first beer tubes have become fairly popular. And that's what I use on the on axle. So that's what they uh, come with on the axle cummerbund. And then it just basically connects down to this tubes here. This tubes piece can attach onto the placard. It can attach onto the plate carrier. Um, I use a, a Velcro wing. So basically like a two sided piece of Velcro underneath that the tube attaches to. And I use that so I can make micro adjustments in how tight it is based on the clothing that I'm wearing. But with that, all I have to do is undo this one side, swim into the plate carrier, and then snap it right back into this tube. So, and I'm good to go. I do not, I just don't really think it makes sense to uh, constantly be lifting up your whole placard, undoing that Velcro, putting a piece around to attach your cummerbund. Doing that multiple times a day, every day, it wears out that Velcro pretty quickly from what I've seen. With the tube, all I gotta do is just reach in here and pull up and I'm off and snap back down and I'm on. It's adjusted to how I like it for what I typically wear. And if I need to make micro adjustments, I'll do that by adjusting that wing in there. So I'm a fan of the tubes concept. Um, it's one of those things I'd say, don't knock it until you've until you try it. Um, last thing I forgot to mention, <clears throat> we're on the back of the LV-119, there's this pouch here on the front plate bag. This is for documents and maps. Um, I use it for maps. Super helpful. I wish other plate carriers had this. Maybe some of them do, I've never seen it. But I absolutely love this. It just keeps easy to just stuff a map back in there and uh, have it accessible when you need it. So <clears throat> that's an overview of this plate carrier. Hopefully I was pretty in depth. Hopefully that uh, answers questions that you might have and gives you some ideas and insights into what I use. Again, this is what I use and it fits my needs at work really well. Um, maybe it would fit yours, maybe it wouldn't, but tweak your gear. I'm constantly changing stuff. Whenever I do make changes, I throw my kit on, I go for a run with it or a fast walk or whatever, but I go do a good shake out of it 60 or 90 minutes to see, oh, do I actually like it? Does it work for me? Does it make noise? And I would recommend you do that too. So don't just copy what I have here. Think through what you're gonna do, try stuff, and then constantly be tweaking and improving. The best people to work with in this sort of line of work are the people who want to constantly hone their craft and improve all the little details. So again, hopefully this is valuable. Links down below for all the different stuff on this kit. If you've got questions, leave a comment. If you've got criticisms, leave a comment and let us know why. If you've got other ideas or stuff that you like, let us know. We really value your comments. And last but not least, thank you all. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe. And we appreciate you all. Hopefully you found some value from this plate carrier breakdown.